This is a story about the last over of the IPL final, but it's also about Yorkers. The over started with 13 needed off six balls. Chennai had Shivan Dubey at the crease with Ravi Jadeja. Dubey had been slapping the ball quite nicely. There were plenty of runs out there. In fact, at the end of the fourth last over and the beginning of the third last over, Chennai had seemingly broken the game with six, 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 four, six. So 13 off the last over, considering the set batters and the scoring rate of the innings at that point, which was 11, meant that CSK were maybe slightly better than a par chance to win. That sort of mass is basically two hits or one hit and a bunch of other madness to win the game. Bowling it was Mohit Sharma, who is now bowling his third consecutive over at the death. Tricky for anyone, but he's been a very good bowler at the end all year. And it was actually Mohamed Shami who got the trickier over before him and he only let eight runs through. So it wasn't all doom for Mohit at that point. And his first ball was a really good Yorker. Fast and straight around off stump. Dubey hits it back to the bowler and there is no run. About as good a victory as Gujarat could have hoped for at that point. The second ball is another Yorker. This one gets a single, but it also just slightly tails away the, the smallest amount of reverse swing. Not a lot, but enough to get miss hits. The third one was supposed to be a Yorker, but Mohit overpitches his leg stump delivery. Ija, who is now on strike, tries to get under that low full toss, but he just doesn't get any timing. This was not a terrible delivery, but it certainly could have been hit for a boundary. He probably gets away with one there. At this point, Mohit knew that he had to make a decision because he was in front in the over, but he still knew two bad balls would lose it for him. And the other thing was, even though the batters and Mohit knew that he was slightly in front in the over, they also would have realized that he had played the same card three times in a row, fast and straight. In fact, depending on how closely they had been watching, he'd actually been bowling pace on for quite a while now. One thing worth remembering, of course, here is that both batters are lefties, but they have different stances and styles. So they could be in a very different position on the crease from ball to ball, not to mention that they would move around a lot as well. In any situation against two batters, the chance of anyone hitting six straight Yorkers is really slim. The best bowlers in the world nail it around 50% of the time at best. With scooping, the bottom of the bats getting better and range hitting, Yorkers tend to look great or get picked up 15 rows back. There's almost no middle ground. It's at this point that Mohit and Hardik start to chat. Hardik is pretty quiet and Mohit is really speaking a lot. And I think, and I have no idea, but I assume that the conversation is about whether he should go away from the Yorker at this point. And the reason I believe that is because Mohit doesn't always bowl this many in a row. Mohit Sharma has three core deliveries at the depth. The Yorker, back of the hand slow ball, and the bouncer. These are three very different balls. One is at your toes, the other on a length, and the last one comes for your teeth. Being good at these three things is a huge plus for any death bowler. But forgetting the Yorker for a moment, one reason he's so good at the death is the combination of bouncer and slower delivery. If you are a batter, it is very hard to go between the two. Out of the hand, one goes up and the other one comes down. The back of the hand ruins your shape and the bouncer can take you off guard. Both are good balls if you deliver them correctly, but they're also high yield deliveries that can go for a lot of boundaries. The back of the hand is a wicket taker, but if you keep your shape when batting, it's still very easy to slap it around. The bouncer gets runs through mistakes as much as anything else, especially from top edges when the field isn't actually set for that kind of delivery. Also, when you're bowling bouncers, you're probably going to be delivering wides. This year might have been made of Mohit's back of the hand slow ball, which has saved and rebuilt his career. And so I assume the batters would have expected that. And that may be why at this point Mohit decides to continue with the Yorker, this time varying it just a little bit by going for the wide version. He actually bowls another full toss, and this is by far and away the most hittable ball he's delivered so far. But he gets away with it as the bat twists in Shivan Dubey's hand, and all he could do is slice it down to long off. Mohit and Hardik talk again, and also a bottle of water is taken out, clearly with a message. In fact, as the 12th is running off the field, Mohit is still yelling something. At That's when Hardik goes over and refocuses him by grabbing him on the shoulders and whispering. And it is worth talking about Mohit the bowler here. This is his second great year in the IPL. His last one was in 2013. There, he managed 20 wickets at 16 while only going at 6.4 runs and over. He was pretty good at taking wickets the next year, but his economy started to get worse and worse, and eventually, he was out of the league. In fact, he was a net bowler coming into this season. He really hasn't played a lot of IPL cricket over the last five years. And now, he's one of the best players. On the, on the broadcast, Ian Bishop called him the comeback player of the year and he's now bowling the final over, and he's slightly ahead in the count. But also remember that at this point, 
Mohit has bowled two straight full tosses after two straight Yorkers, but he has got away with them. So the perfectly reasonable question is whether he tries another one or goes to his variations. His last back of the hand slower ball was now seven balls ago by my count, and Bhatti Raidu saw it, waited, and then slapped it for six. Since then, it seems like everything has been on pace, either full or hard lengths. And by my count, in those last seven on pace deliveries, he has conceded only four runs and taken two wickets. He has conceded only four runs and taken two wickets. So the question is, does he want to try a new kind of card trick or just trust the thing that is working? And Mohit chooses Yorker. He misses his length for the third straight ball, and this one is a straight half volley. Jadeja gets under it, like he did with that full toss earlier, but this time, there's timing. So the ball heads back over long on for six. It was the first attempted Yorker that got hit, but remember, not the first one he got wrong. The last two, maybe even the last three, have been clear errors. The previous two had been errors, and so now the last three balls have not been exactly what he wanted to bowl, but two of them he got away with, so he stayed with it. Now what does he do? He and Hardik talk again. There really isn't a good answer at this point. If he bowls another Yorker, they now are pretty sure that is what is coming, so Jadeja can be ready for it. If he bowls a back of the hand delivery, it may sit up, giving Jadeja enough time to change his shot. And a short ball could easily take a glove or a helmet and still be four. The problem is, if he had bowled any variations coming up to this point, he'd probably be in a more solid place. That's if they worked, of course. But he backed what was working, and that is what he does again. Mohit chooses the straight Yorker. It's a full toss and also down leg side, a double mistake. And with six runs needed, it would have been hard to get under. But of course, they only need four now. He bowled six Yorkers. Two were good, one was probably neutral, and three were bad. By most counts, Mohit actually bowled a good over. In that chase, with wickets in hand and two hitters at the crease, Gujarat Titans actually got in front. He backed himself, and even when he made mistakes, they were pretty small. There were no waist high tosses or wides or length balls by accident. The last ball was the first terrible bit of execution, but neither of his mistakes was massive. It's just that it was the wrong ball at the wrong time. Basically, it was enough to hit, and they lost the game. That's what happens at the death. 